Hello everyone, my name is Amber Case. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. We work at a place called the Esri R&D Center Portland where we do secretive research and development tasks related to mapping and the future of mapping. Um, we're a small team here in Portland, Oregon. There's a peanut gallery of us in the back in that row st stuck together. Um, and we're going to tell you a little bit about uh, a problem that we had and how we solved it with IRC and hacking IRC bots. So first off, when we were a pretty small team, when we were just GeoLoki, um, it was really easy to communicate. It was really easy to know what everybody was working on. But as we got larger, some things started to happen. We were doing fine at about six people because everybody has um, a pretty good idea of what everybody else in the organization is doing at that size. And um, as soon as you get above six, you end up with subgroups forming where now there's like more specialized, more focused projects. And basically what ended up happening is after you know, we were six, seven, eight, nine people, all of a sudden, you know, everybody isn't always aware of everybody else. So we needed some way to share information across the whole team. So we tried, we tried using you know daily stand-ups, the Scrum method, and um, you know it's it's kind of kind of awkward because you have to get everybody in the same room at the same time every day and interrupt everybody's flow for ten minutes to sit them you know just stand up and actually you're on the spot, you have to say what you were doing and what's blocking you. And um, yeah, we tried that for about like four or five days and then gave up because it wasn't really working very well. Yeah, it sucked. And every tech company I was at, it was always Scrum. And I said, well, why do we need to do Scrum? And I, you couldn't ever say we shouldn't do Scrum because that was the only thing. There was nothing to replace it. There was nothing to do otherwise and say I was out of town or somebody else was out of town. They might have to remotely call in, set up for a long time. And if no one came into the office until like, 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., you'd get all the early people coming in, they'd work, they'd have to break their flow and all the stuff that they stored in their brain while they were programming, and then say what they did yesterday, say what they were working on today, and say what was blocked. It didn't make any sense, it's totally out of sequence. So we said, what if there was just a way to report what you did, when you did it, in the contextual moment, and then have everybody, have everybody see it later without having to stop what you're doing and have everybody run on the same time schedule, because that's not how things work in the real world. So we said, well, what if you just said done? Like, explanation point, done, bang, done. Um, and then we said, well, where can you say that? You know, um, we heard at Facebook there was this thing called Colbert Reports, which uh, is just, you write a little tiny paragraph, and then it goes to everybody. Um, and the Zuckerberg liked that. And uh, we had our friend from Facebook over, and we were like, well, how do you do it at Facebook? Like, how do you have so many people, and like, how do you scale? And like, yeah, so we have these things called Colbert Reports, and it's cool. And we're like, well, what if you didn't have to write any email at all? Um, so we just said, everybody's been using IRC. Why don't we just have an IRC? We've been using this for groups all the time. So all you have to do is say, bing, done. Here's what you did. And then after a while, um, everybody gets an email. And that's it. So every single day, you say what you did, when you did it. And then at the end of the day, you get an email with what everybody's done. So if I'm out of town, somebody else is out of town, somebody's in a different time zone, somebody's sick that day, somebody's working on something, they all get the email at the end of the day, and they can see what everybody's done. It was such a relief. It was like, oh. <laughs> we can actually move on without having to stop all the time and share. And then if we wanted somebody else to know what we did, we could just forward on the report to someone. So we, we added a few others as well, because it's one thing to say thing, with things when they're finished, but um, that didn't cover all the cases we were trying to share. So you know, there's also what you're going to do tomorrow. Um, there's, there's to do for that. There's also um, doing, which is if you're in the middle of something and it's not actually done, but you still want to make a note that you were working on it. Um, there's hero if you want to you know, give somebody kudos during the day. Um, and that's always fun to see your name pop up at the end of the, of the day's email. Or blocking if there's you know, loud noises on the roof because they're tearing out your skylight, for example, hypothetically speaking. Um. <laughs> And then after a while, we realized that we were often copying and pasting lots of images into the channel, so we made a meme bot uh, add-on. Uh, so all you have to do with a meme bot is literally just put meme and the text. Um, and if you want to grab an image from image search, um, you can just put that in square brackets. So for instance, this would turn into this, um, and it would work really well. We said, well, there's got to be a place to put all of these memes so that everybody can see them at the same time, even if they're not in the IRC channel. So, this is actually us playing small ball at the office. It's a, it's a watered down version of uh, Foursquare because it's probably too loud to have a proper Foursquare court and too large. But there's a status board. It's actually Panic's status board software where you can see everything that's going on. And we put all the memes up there. Um, if somebody has a really good meme, then we keep it up there. 
You can also see all the GitHub uh, activity that's going on. So what happened when uh, our company got acquired and we ended up having more and more people to work with? So the funny thing is that we were using this just with ourselves in our IRC channel. And we started getting more of the company in on IRC as well, because it's, uh, it's a nice way to, to communicate. And you know, it's better than phone calls, for example. Um, so what would happen is uh, we started getting people on IRC and joining our channel, and they would just hang out and talk to us. And then they would see that we're doing this thing, and we're, and we're, we're using this done command. And everybody would be like, hey, what are you guys doing? What's that? I want to use that too. So it started spreading naturally within the organization, um, and more and more groups started picking up on it. So, you know, I set this up really quick as a as a database basically with a really minimal API. There was no web component whatsoever. It was just the IRC bot and the email got sent out. And so I was like, crap. Okay, I got to make a new group. Go at the database and you know, do this all day long, adding people to the groups and things. And that started getting old really, really fast. So then we sat down, we said, well, we just need a really simple interface to manage this. Uh, so we sat down, used um, Bootstrap, and put some stuff together. So you just sign in with your GitHub account. You decide if you want to add a new group. You can put the group name, IRC channel, the time zone. This is really important because the time zone uh, that you send the report out into every night is different if you don't set the time zone. So, um, so usually have it go out at 8 or 9 PM. People who could sign up choose what they wanted to go out. And we decided this time because it's at the end of the day and you're not technically doing anything anymore. It's kind of this recap. It's like a picture develops over time during your day and you get it at the end of the day. And it's just kind of interesting. Like I look forward to it at 9 PM every night to get this report. And you, know, you can always add duns all the way up until the end of the day. And then you get this report of what everybody's done. So. Um, once you add a group, this is actually all the groups that are in Esri right now and all the different members that are in the group and their delivery time and when they were created. So there's actually a lot of different teams using this right now. Um, and then adding users is just adding the user. And when you add a user, it's important to have like their username, their email, and then all of their IRC NICs. Because sometimes if you're logged into like 10 uh, devices, it'll be like, it'll start to take um, letters off of your name or like put underscores in place and you have to have like a few of those. So like, you add like four of those and things are okay. So no matter what your username is or your nick, then you can still add duns in it and it'll still show up on the report. Um, and then like your GitHub username and email if you wanna actually track active projects on GitHub in this as well. Um, so this is like our team right now and everybody in it. Um, and so then the other question is like, what's a good IRC client if you wanna do this on IRC? A bunch of us use LimeChat, which is a nice OSX app. If you go to limechat.net, you get kind of confused because it's all in Japanese. And every time I tell someone to go download LimeChat, they think I'm sending them to like a spyware site. But it's, it's legit. You just have to search for LimeChat English. And uh, <laughs> so you can, get that for, you can get that for your Mac. And they also have a nice iPhone app. It's not free, but it's good. Um, so it works on the iPhone really well, too. And then, uh, then it makes it really easy because then you can get your email report at the end of the day. Um, so then the question is, when all these different people were using this, you know, did we sit down and write documentation or anything and try and get them onboarded and be like, here's, a, here's your webinar and your introduction to done reports? No, we didn't do any of that at all. Um, we, yeah. yeah, and basically <laughs> we were like, no, we're not going to document any of this. We're just going to see what happens. And you know, what happens is somebody uses the done command, and they figure out that that's how it works, and, that, and somebody else sees them use it, and that's and they you know, transfer the knowledge. And um, if, if anybody does pop in the channel and ask how it works, somebody else will go and explain it. So, and it's actually better, because then you get to see how somebody else um, interprets the usage of it. Yeah, and we found that other people are better at explaining what it does than we are uh, to the specific group. So if they're really good friends with someone, they might be like, hey, you see that you can do done and doing and block. And another guy is just like, hey, you could use memes. Like, check it out. It's a meme channel. And it really depends on who it is. So if we just had all this documentation, all these things, there would be nothing, no Easter eggs left for people to discover accidentally. Um, every once in a while, we do pop into other channels and like meme them or, or um, do something that they didn't know existed. Um, but more often, uh, this was implemented. Instead. And there's, there's one exception to the no documentation rule, which is at the very bottom of the email, if there was something that that group didn't use that day, if there was a command that the group didn't use, it'll put it at the bottom, saying, because you know you can also do this. And it's only one thing. So that way you sort of very slowly discover the new features. It's not reading a manual. It's just, hey, there's also this thing that exists. And that, that actually works surprisingly well. Like from one day to the next, the next day, that group started using that command. 
So this is all uh, built using the ZenIRC bot framework, which I think uh, Rathan talked about last year here uh, when he was just launching it. Um, this is a really cool framework for building IRC bots. It's um, service oriented, so there's the core um, IRC bot process that is logged into IRC, but then everything else, that all the logic you want to write is built separately and talks to it through Redis. So the nice thing is that you can write these services in any, any language as long as they can talk to Redis. And you don't have to worry about um, your bot like quitting and rejoining the channel when you want to change the code. So this is the basic the diagram is the Zen IRC bot core process, talking to the IRC server, talking to Redis, passing messages back and forth, and then all the different commands are written as different services. It's also really nice because if you want to just enable a few different features, you can. If you want to go share something on GitHub, you're not sharing a whole bot code, you're just sharing this service. So if you want to try it out, um, you can sign up at donereports.com and figure out something. Um, otherwise, there's actually the source code here on GitHub. This is the source code for the service. So if you if you get this, this is the IRC bot service, and you also need the Zen IRC bot thing. And there's a little link in that readme to it. Yeah. So um, and then the other cool thing is you'll, then you'll be running a cool IRC bot process, and you can write other funny things into it. And there's a bunch of other like services for Zen IRC bot that people are hacking on too. So there's like weather service for getting um, local weather updates like pretty much real time. It'll say like, hey, it's raining for the next 10 minutes. That pops into the channel every now and then. Um, or uh, Karma service. That's always a fun one to put into IRC channels. Yeah, so you can just say plus plus, not like anything plus plus, like person plus plus, and then it'll give them Karma. So we have like Outlook, which is minus minus constantly, which means. I think Outlook's down to about negative 280. Yeah, every time we have yeah. a problem with Outlook, we negate its Karma. Um, so there was a take out frustration on it. Yeah, yeah it's really nice. Um, there was a uh, poll on Hacker News today, which was, what uh, internal communication tool do you use? Like, um, a lot of people use like Campfire or. Um, I think the most popular one was uh, HipChat and yeah. Skype and IRC. Yeah, so yeah, that was interesting. So it'd be interesting, although we don't have much time to port it over to different stuff. Like, if you want to use this on your own system, you should port it over and just make it work and like contribute to the project. Um, this whole thing is just open source and free um, and like makes sense. But we may end up doing something where if we host the whole thing, then we'll like charge for the setup and stuff like that. But it's mostly just to help people communicate better because we were really sick of, uh, of the idea of not knowing what people were doing. And then we kept trying Scrum and it didn't make any sense. So there you go. And then we'll do a live demo. So the end. Um, if you want to and you try it out, you can tweet suggestions to at Dunn Reports on Twitter. Just made a Twitter account so you can like tell us what you think. So thanks a bunch. So if you want to see it live, we have this little secret channel uh, called the Unicorner um, uh, because Unicorns are developers and designers in one, and they're very rare. And we have a corner of them at the office. So keep them in a corner and call it a unicorn. So, so this is the, the um, uh, so this is an example of the karma. Um, and uh, this is an example of the meme. Um, the cool thing is it picks the right picture based on the text you've put in. Yeah. So it's that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We didn't have enough time to like put it into a public channel so everybody could test it, but maybe next time. So we have time for questions because we only spent like 12 minutes, apparently. <laughs> anyway, so we pretty much do this all day at the office. <laughs> Is our job. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, um, ZenRC bot. The core process is written in Node.js, and then um, it it's nice writing the services in Node also. But as a couple of services I've written in PHP, because why not? Um, and the API for this is actually Ruby. So it's kind of a mix and. <laughs> no. 
was terrified for a second. Like, it's really running Emacs. <laughs> Did not know there was an Emacs <laughs> client called NIRC. Although that makes sense. Everything, every, um, the question is, is it push only or is there like an archive? Um, everything is archived in the API right now and there's like a database that stores it so that it can generate the email, but there's no interface to that archive at, yet at all. I kind of want to do that so that you can like go look through them later, but right now everybody's just using their email archive. It, this, is, this is the kind of, uh, it's kind of taking the development path of building only exactly the features that we need when we need them. Oh yeah, there's the, also the undone command if you accidentally did something. Do you have any services uh, from your system that will alert you on IRC as well as going the other way? Does it kind of have like a server tell you if like this number? Oh yeah, so I forgot to mention that, but a lot of the, uh, the reason that we're so, that we're in IRC all the time is because a lot of the system level messages about yeah. the servers pop into these channels. Can I click on the alerts? Sure, I don't know what's there right now. Some there warnings. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, that goes in here. There's some logs, which I won't show you. Um, all of my tweets, if people tweet at, tweet at me, come in here, so I don't use TweetDeck. I just get the tweets in here. Same with Aaron. Um, we have a private channel there for just communication. Um, each of the projects that we're working on, like the developer site, has its own um, sub-channel. Um, and then we have just a channel for like the Portland office. Uh, although that has tons of people in it, not from the Portland office, just like watching and like learning about like done reports. That's like the data channel, which is yeah, why they wish we, they were in Portland. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> but yeah, to to answer your question, yeah, the, there's a lot of server alerts and of various sorts. There's. Um, we use Munin a lot for server monitoring, so a lot of the thresholds you can figure there will send alerts to IRC. So if the database is lagging behind, if there's a spike in disk activity, if there's um, low m system memory and things like that. Um, and then there's also um, process monitoring, goes into another channel. Yeah. <laughs> Being distracting. <laughs> So when, would any of you use this or a system like this at some point? Yeah. Whoa. Cool. Wait, 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 wait. Keep your hands, <laughs> keep your hands up, please. Excellent. Uh, uh, very good. Okay. That's proof. <laughs> that we're, um, how many of you guys use IRC for internal communications? Okay. Keep your hands wow, up. Hold cool. on. Hold on. This is. This is the lazy, uh, That's true. the we lazy kind of did social scientist. That crowd. Yeah. Uh, oh, good point. Yeah, this is not really a good. We should have said like internal communication systems and hacking internal communication system bots, and then it would have been okay. Yeah. Does anybody use something other than IRC, and what is it? Just shout it out for free. Okay. Skype. What? Can't find. Google Plus. Go figure. Yeah. What? Fab. Fab. Oh, that system. Okay, cool. Yeah, I heard about that from Bob Baldwin. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know Bob Bob Baldwin. P H A B. Okay. Question of the people who, of the people who use IRC all the time, how many of you have bots in your channels that do things? Yep. Okay. Cool. What did you say? Used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Posted IRC. We did have a thing called recap where you just set like explanation point recap, and then um, the bot will send you a direct like a private message, mm -hmm. and then it'll go to web archives. And I don't think we have that anymore. Yeah, that one broke. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't fixed it. Um, but everything is archived. So yeah, I like like the component that's really important is to have that web component so then you can go back and search and a calendar view so you can actually go back on specific dates and look. Um, we can't show that to you since it broke like a year ago or something. I don't know yeah. how long. It's been a while. Yeah. The archives are still there. There's no web the, part right now. Know. We need to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Anything else? I'm curious in practice how you guys are using the, uh, the, the block and the, the blocks. Mm. 
-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for blocking, um, usually what ends up happening is it's not so much the um, it's not the same stuff that would have a that would have come up during a conversation. It's often something that's a little bit bigger picture than the minor things. Um, so it's like blocking. You know, we're having wireless issues at the office, or or um, uh, you know, this such and such is too loud, or such and such doesn't work. And usually, what ends up happening is that somebody else sees it when they say it in the channel and offers to help out. So. For that reason, it's actually um, I actually like it a lot, and it's been really useful. Um, and it sort of, and that's the other reason that this is all done in an IRC channel and not done through private messages or instant message through some other channel. It's because when it's all public, um, people can see what each other are doing in real time and jump in and share information better um, as it comes up. So, nice. It's been oh yeah, I, sh I should also mention that um, this we originally set up in November 2012. So I guess that means it's been about six months now. And we've actually all used it every single day since then, since the first day it turned on. And it has just been so much, so much simpler than any other mechanism we've tried for this sort of thing. And you know we've set up other internal systems or tried to use GitHub issues for this kind of thing or whatever, whatever you know. And there's, they always just die out after you know two weeks. And it's kind of like the low friction stuff I was talking about yesterday, where you know you have to have such a low threshold of over what you normally are doing. You can't introduce too many extra steps into the process, otherwise people just won't use it. Yeah, true. Well, so the, the way you use this is. is basically get an email a day and then, correct me if I'm wrong, someone whose job it is or wants to deal with that email and react to that email will react to that. But the next, correct me if I'm wrong, the next day is a whole new day, right? Yeah. yeah. Next day is a whole new day, yeah. This is not ticket tracking or anything like that. Um, for ticket tracking, people just use ticket tracking systems. This is more about the group communication aspect. And for, uh, for teams that are in different cities, it's also very useful because you can't get them together in the stand-up situation all the time. Um, and video conferencing only goes so far in that situation, too. Do you actually get work done, or do you just send me a <laughs> <laughs> uh, No comment. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for uh, awesome audience experience. <laughs>
we were at Open Source Bridge, and I said, Aaron, you should put the bot in the PDX, it was PDX web dev channel then, uh, and he put it in, and uh, after a while, like, he kept, like, Loki's kind of a lurker that responds, a reactive bot, not a proactive bot, and so after a while, someone was like, I was like, Loki, Loki, are you a bot? And then, um, Loki says, dude, and then the guy's like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Loki passed the test on that day, I think. <laughs> Get the terrain prize for that. Ooh, sending somebody else to do, like, to do, I need you to do this thing? Yeah, that's, that's kind of like what you would do through GitHub, assigning somebody something, but instead you just do it through IRC. That actually might be good, because well, everybody has their usernames in there. And the nice thing about the way this works right now is that you can kind of do this sort of behavior that we didn't expect, because um, if you try that right now, you'd say to do, and you'd probably put their IRC name in it, in it and you'd just say something. And then what'll happen is they'll get notified right then that they were mentioned on IRC, and in the email, they'll see it. And so it it's not formal, it's not, like structured, but it would probably work. And that's kind of how a lot of this behavior is emerging in this system, actually. Oh, which actually reminds me, there's one that we forgot, which is quote. So whenever you do bang quote, and then you put the quote in. So whenever we're at a conference and somebody says something funny or there's an overheard, we'll put a quote in. And then it'll say who it came from, so like who submitted the quote, um, which is super funny. And that's always at the bottom. So it's like, I always look for the quotes because often they're really, really funny. And like I wasn't around for them, so. Um, so yeah, uh, often somebody gets like mentioned in that, so it's not too far of a jump to actually assign people stuff to do um, in that way. It's all there, but there's no. It, it's in the API, but there's no. There's no actual um, other interface for that right now. And I kind of like the simplicity of it, just because it's super simple. There's nothing to learn. Debating making a web interface for it so you can actually go back and look at like, you know, two months ago or without digging up your email. But haven't haven't got to that yet. Hasn't really been a need. There's a cool little service that you can throw on top of IRC. So if like for a whole channel, it will actually analyze what are the most frequent words people have used. Um, it'd be fun to like throw all the done stuff in there and just see how many times like Outlook minus minus happened or like uh, all the different things that, that people were doing. Um, we were also thinking of making a meme book based on all of the memes that we were creating in the office and just have it like printed through a company and just have this book of stuff that only makes sense to us and nobody else. Just have it be a table talk book because um, they're all set up based on, they're basically each time a meme is made, the time is in, encoded into like the title of it, like the time and date. So we actually know when it was generated um, instead of it just being like whatever you get from the web. <laughs> Everyone is still sitting here. It's like you guys want more. But <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any more to give you. We could bring up Loki's adventures in IRC on the on the thing and show you all of the all of the weird things that Loki has done over over time. But you have computers, you could also do that. I, I have a feeling that we finished way too early and you're just all kind of cozily sitting in here uh, waiting for the next talk, which is, yeah, the post-lunch nap, yeah. So, um, has anybody else built a bot that does something? That's awesome. Oh man, I would love to like troll the people down in California at headquarters with that. <laughs> Earthquake! But you can only use it once per day. And it will have a random amount of magnitude as well. So just have like crazy. Uh, you first and then you. I was just going to say I have a GitHub. Mm -hmm.
That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, for the record, I don't know if this is still being recorded, but have like a ticket, like Bing ticket, and then the project, and then. Uh, that's great because like you'll be in a meeting or it'll be some offhand thing. You really don't want to go into that web interface and like click so many buttons, and you can just say, like from your phone, like make a new ticket. And that way, everybody has their username in there, so you can even make a ticket and assign somebody a ticket through there too, yeah, which would be pretty awesome. There's a little bit of GitHub functionality already for that. You basically say, once you've looked up the credentials, you basically create a GitHub account for it. You say, in chat, I'm Jeff Smith, and then you associate GitHub username with your profile. Wow, that's awesome. That's really cool. I have a question. How many people use IRC from their phone? Cool, about half. Like PDA, PDA counts, yes. <laughs> um, why uh, do do any of you really like it, or is there an issue with like battery drain, or like that it's too chatty? Like, is there any way you like why more people don't use it from their phone, or is it just? Yeah, the log in, log out. Yeah. Just need to make you. It just needs to make you into a bot, and then you will never log off. Yeah. yeah. So I run it on my cell phone with a T-Mux session that's already connected through. To read it, it's nice that it's always on, but then I don't get notifications. So I don't have my phone on constantly. And if someone needs to get a hold of me, I, I guess I could write an app and maybe if I mention this, that, but I'm yeah. using all that traffic. So okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Not bad. Nate, did I see you? Did you raise your hand at one point? But I don't know. Nope. Oh, that was, me. Oh, that was you. I was going to mention we had coffee support for us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, geez, we should tell you about coffee. This is this is important. Um, here, you want to explain? <laughs> coffee, coffee is in fact important. It's actually the currency of our office. So we, the barista is just a couple blocks up the street, and uh, so we'll often go get coffee during various points of the day. Yeah, this deserves a, a, an image. Um, and you know, what ends up happening is like you run out of the office to go walk up to coffee and somebody forgets their wallet. So it's like, sure, I'll buy you, get me tomorrow. And then you know, that happens a couple times in a row. And before you know it, like, nobody can keep track of what's going on anymore. So we were like, we need a way to keep track of coffee debt. Oh, make sure you hide the address bar, because it's not. Um, <laughs> Put it into <laughs> full screen mode. Oh no. <laughs> no, it's the, not working. The, the URL is the password. Wait, wait, wait. wait. No, don't plug it in. So it's, not a, it's not in proper full screen mode. Don't do okay. No, I can't get it out of full. Command shift up. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hopefully it'll still work. <laughs> Great. Um, oh. Oh, hold on. That's true. We have to we have to um, mirror the display. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And then throw over. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So this is our. This is yeah. This is the this is the coffee scoreboard, <laughs> and uh, this is who owes who how many coffees. So if if I buy somebody a coffee, I'll drag the little coffee from me to to them, and I'm then it. So in debt. This is horrible. Oh yeah. You. <laughs> you yeah, you gotta start coming to coffee more. So, um, a lunch about six to seven dollars is worth two coffees. Um, a dinner is worth three. So, if somebody pays for dinner, then I just drag over. Uh, I say, "Oh, well, Josh bought some dinner, so I'm just gonna drag some coffees over here." And then, uh, yeah, so you can actually see in the IRC channel of you know, Josh bought Amber one coffee. Josh bought Amber one coffee. And then when I repay the debt. Sorry, Josh, you're going to get really confused. <laughs> He's like in the office being like, what are you doing? Um, you are not buying me coffee. I did not buy you anything. Um, and then you like, turn it back. And every once in a while, the graph reduces, so everything gets really simple. So instead of everybody being like, I'm going to pay. Um, yeah, so, so here's a good example. I owe like three people one coffee, and two people owe me coffees. So that's kind of redundant. So there's a, there's a command that will uh, just traverse the, the debt graph and reduce it to its most simple form. So in reality, um, you know, I would end up owing 
uh, Ryan like one, I think, and everything cancels out on my part, and all the debt would be transferred elsewhere. You did? Oh. There we go. The graph has been simplified. Thank you, Nate. So um, now we are a simplified mess. I <laughs> basically owe even more coffee. This is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Well, oh well. Um, we also, so after some projects were done, we did like a two day hackathon where we were like, let's do anything. And then everybody got together and made an app. Uh, and the app is just a little mobile app where you authenticate by, it says, who are you? And you just click and it like logs you in as you. <laughs> this, yeah, you click on your face and that's the login. Um, and then it's, you just slide, like in that, it's a very beautiful, you just slide your face onto somebody else's face and it gives them, <laughs> gives them coffee. Um, but uh, the other thing is there's a broadcast, so we make this thing, like we make these location-based messages and geofences and geo triggers. So basically you can walk down the street and you can broadcast that you're at um, like the local coffee shop and then everyone will be like, ooh, and they can send in their requests. From and IRC. From IRC, yeah. And then you can come back up the street the, and the, get the, the coffee. The yeah, the want command, yeah. See, this is why none of this is documented. <laughs> Forget all of it. We should have just given the whole talk on coffee instead. Yeah. And led into the other stuff. Uh, huh? I want that. You want this? So, this versus done reports, which is more interesting, which people want more? <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> uh, so, Nate, can you explain the front end of this? The graph system. I don't know. You wouldn't. Yeah, it's hyperbolic geometry. No, just kidding. <laughs> so how would I, Aaron, uh, how would I post on my own site saying, I owe Aaron Bricks a column of coffee? <laughs> Cross-site currency debt? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to, we'll think about this one. <laughs> And then and then paying it back. Yeah. That was so, so powered by Triplify. Yeah. Oh, for last South by Southwest, yeah, right? Yeah. Send me a beer. Yeah. Right. Skip skip Twitter. Yeah. It sounds like a new market for Triplify to get into. The indie web market. It's very lucrative right now, as yeah. we all know. Yeah. The indie web market is a, a, a nascent emerging uh, uh, demographic. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, I'll chip good. in. I'll chip in for that. Yeah. And then you have to have a, a graph like this for the entire indie web and your own cluster of people, um, approximate like geography, and it moves around based on who's in town and it hooks into a service like Doppler. So it always is like all amorphous, and you just log in. You're actually, hey, these people are near me, and then you like. They buy you coffee, and then it just gets really complicated um, and great. <laughs> All right, that's a good weekend hack. Okay, we'll we'll give a retrospective on this year, uh, on on next year. Um, meanwhile, you should put the map box box bot back up, like the the one that you had. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that that concludes this session. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>